Hey everyone, so this video is meant to show you how easy it is to create a character in the Pathfinder 2e uh, system on Foundry Tabletop. So let's begin by going over to the Actors tab, which looks like this People icon in the sidebar, and we can click on New Character to open our character sheet. Our GM has given us permission to edit it, which is why we're seeing it in this format. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to build a first level human wizard but I will be touching on some other things that might be important should you build characters of different classes. So one of the most important things to understand about the way this sheet is put together is the principle of drag and drop. So in many fields, you will see this little plus icon near the field. You can click on that to open a little dialog box from which you can just drag the relevant option over. So for Ancestry, I'm a human, so I'm just going to drag that over. And you can see that when I did that, it automatically adjusted some fields on the character sheet. For instance, my ancestry HP has been calculated, as well as the languages and my traits. You'll also see that the drag and drop feature can accommodate choice pretty well. So for instance, if we go to heritage and say that we are a versatile heritage human, we can drag that over. And then we have a little pop-up box here that lets us choose what general feat we want to take at level one. And now um, you can pick whatever one you like. It's not particularly important at the moment and it will automatically be added to the sheet in the Feats tab, which we will get to later, and I'll show you that it's there. All right, the next thing we should add is our class. So let's go ahead and do that. And there we go, so we have more choices to make. So let's say we're in Abjura, and our arcane thesis is spell blending. And when I did that, you'll notice that the saves were automatically adjusted to their uh, correct proficiencies, as well as perception. Um, also, my armor class, my unarmored defense here, it knows that I'm trained in it, which is why my AC went from 10 to 13. A lot of this stuff is automatically calculated as you populate the sheet, and that's part of what makes this sheet so powerful. So I'm just going to finish this off with uh, my background, and I'm going to say that I'm a scholar. Okay, and that's the basic mechanical setup for our first page. Now, you will obviously be adding and adjusting your statistics like strength, dexterity, constitution, etc. But that's done manually just by clicking on the fields and entering the new value as so. So I'm not going to spend too much time on it. It's pretty easy to grasp. So I'm going to be taking us through these tabs from left to right, but there are going to be some tabs that I'm actually going to save for a subsequent video. This is specifically the spellcasting tab that you see over here that looks like a wand and the crafting tab that looks like a hammer. And I'm saving them for another video just because they are only applicable to certain characters. And uh, there's a little bit more of an in-depth explanation that I could go into with the space that a separate video provides. For right now, I'm just not gonna consider them. Focus on stuff that everyone's gonna use. If you're a spellcaster or a crafter, do check out that video as well. I'm gonna skip over this one at the moment because uh, we're gonna be coming back to it. I'm gonna to go to the equipment tab, which looks like this little box icon. And so on this tab, there's a good opportunity to showcase the other powerful feature of these sheets, which is the compendium browser lookup. So in many places, you will see this little magnifying glass. And so for instance, if I'm adding my first level items that I have, if I click the little magnifying glass, it opens this compendium browser, and you will notice that it automatically filters for the field that I clicked the magnifying glass icon on. So I clicked it near weapons. So it is currently filtering and showing me only the weapons that are currently in the system. So there are a lot of them, obviously. Um, but if I wanted to just have access to all of the equipment, I can just easily clear the filter. So let's say for right now, I'm just going to keep it simple. I just want an adventurous pack. I can just drag that over pretty simply. It automatically populates it with uh, everything in the adventurous pack set up for your convenience. A quick note about equipment before we leave that behind us is to always keep in mind to equip and invest your items. So for instance, if I wanted to wear a, let's say a full plate. Yes, that's pretty ridiculous as a wizard, but just for the sake of illustration. You, you notice that when I drag the full plate into my character sheet, nothing changed about my armor class, though really something should change, right? So what you wanna keep in mind is you need to be wearing it. There's a little shirt icon here that I wanna click on and there's worn armor. 
and that will adjust my AC. It will also provide penalties to my speed and uh, certain skill checks as appropriate to the armor check penalty. For instance, we can see my speed now is 15 feet because I don't have the strength to be wearing full plate armor. And under proficiencies, you can see acrobatics and athletics are suffering because of that armor check penalty. All of that is calculated automatically. And I also mentioned investing. So this is something that happens a bit later when you have magic items. Uh, but for instance, let's say that this armor was a plus one full plate. Voila. So what this means is it has a plus one armor potency rune, which means when I wear it, I would expect that it provides an additional point of armor over what a regular full plate might provide. But as you can see right now, it's still 16. It's exactly the same as a mundane full plate. And that's where investment comes in. So you will see for any item that can be invested, this little diamond appears beside it. When I click that, that is when it will take into account the potency runes. And um, in the case of certain items that modify your skills, you would need to invest them for it to reflect in your proficiency tab. Now I wanted to show the uh, skills or proficiencies tab to be more accurate. So this has all of your weapon armor proficiencies and your skill proficiencies. So at the moment, the automation of the sheet is such that the weapon and armor proficiencies are automatically set when you drag in your class, but the skills are not. It doesn't automatically assign all your skills, so you need to do that manually. What I usually do is I build the character on a very useful tool like Wanderer's Guide or uh, Path Builder, and then I can just transfer it over to Foundry VTT, enter the stuff manually, but this makes sure that I don't miss any skill proficiencies or anything like that. So how you set proficiencies is very simple. You can just click on this untrained button and select it, uh, the level of proficiency that you're at at the moment. So this is the feats tab, the one that looks like a little metal. So um, here we can see that we have an empty slot for ancestry feats. Um, if we were a martial character, we would have an empty slot under class feats, but as we know, most spellcasting characters only get their class feat at level two. So how I would fill this up is I can click the little plus icon and the great thing here is it opens up the compendium browser. Similarly to how we saw in equipment, it automatically selects for things that meet this requirement. So it's only showing me first level ancestry feats for humans. It pairs down uh, the options there accurately. All right, now I think it's time we actually go back and revisit a uh, a tab that I ignored before, which is the actions tab. So that is the second one over here. And you can see that the first things first, uh, it has our strikes, which we may not be using a whole lot as a wizard, but they're there if you need them. Very useful for a marshal. Um, and it also has other actions. You can see that it was actually pre-populated. This would have been blank when I had my a character with nothing on them. But as I've added feats and my class and that kind of thing, it's automatically added a few actions that it's correct in assuming that I will be using quite often like drain bonded item. So this tab is meant to act as kind of a, a, a summary of your most used actions, a way to easily reference the rules concerning them. Um, and you can also share that with everyone else. If you mouse over the icon, um, there's a, it turns to a chat bubble. You can click that to toss it out there. So one of the things I like to use this tab for is to keep track of actions that I use often that may not even be provided by an item I have equipped or a, a feat or a class feature. So for instance, say that my wizard likes to demoralize people. That's what he uses his third action for a lot of the time. So what I can do is I can go into this magnifying glass, uh, the action browser, and I can drag that over. And you'll see that it provides a handy reference of the rules, yes, but it also does a little bit more. So for instance, if I wanna actually make the intimidation check, I can just click this embedded button. And what it does is it automatically, uh, it doesn't just make an intimidation check, it makes a demoralized check. And the system is smart enough to recognize that if you have specific bonuses to the demoralize action that may not be applicable to the intimidation skill as a whole, if you click these embedded buttons, it will actually count them in. This is also pretty useful because you can see just at a glance and everyone can see the degrees of success and their respective outcomes. And it also provides the GM a useful tool in being able to just drag frightened two or frightened one 
to the monster if it succeeds um, instead of like right clicking on the token, finding the status and updating it that way. So in general, wherever possible, I would definitely recommend that you get your favorite actions and you try to find these embedded buttons. For instance, I'm by no means athletic as a wizard, but you know, if I was a marshal, I might use the shove action. So the shove action has the same thing. I can just click here and it'll give me shove. The other tab we haven't looked at yet is the effects tab. And actually I'm not gonna explain too much about this at the moment because it is gonna be way more relevant in the playing video that I will shortly show you guys. Um, at the moment, just uh, all you need to know is this is where it keeps track of all of the things currently affecting you. So this includes status effects like, you know, quickened one or slowed two or stunned two, etc. cetera. Um, it also includes effects like if you're affected by the bless spell, that will also show up here under effects. These are all of the things that are modifying the statistics of your character. This is the biography tab. You can use it or not use it as you like. Um, I kind of enjoy it as a nice way to store the important details of my character. There's even a section for campaign notes. And finally, we have a Pathfinder Society tab here for those who are playing Pathfinder Society sanctioned games. Um, I myself uh, am not very familiar with that, but I gather this has the relevant information you should keep in mind when you're playing such a game. The sheet also lets you customize it to an extent. So these little dots on the side here, the three dots beside the tab bar, will let you adjust what tabs are available to your character. So for instance, if I was a marshal, I may not need to see the spellcasting tab. I know that I'm not a crafter, so I can remove the crafting tab. I know that I'm not playing a Pathfinder Society game, so I might remove that as well. In which case, the list will be a bit pared down and become a bit easier to navigate. And that is the long and the short of setting up a character in the Pathfinder 2e system on Foundry VTT. A lot of it, as you saw, is just dragging and dropping or looking in the Compendium browser. And a lot of the work is done for you with automatic scaling. Just before we finish, I will also show you that when you level up, really the most work you're gonna be doing is adjusting this little number up here. Because when you do so, for instance, if I go to level five, a lot of this stuff is automatically changed. HP, proficiencies, that kind of thing. You will see those proficiencies here change as well. For instance, if I was a marshal and I got expert weapon proficiency at level five, that would be shown here as well. I hope you guys found this video useful and there will be another video forthcoming about um, how best to use the PF2E system during play to make that playing experience smooth as well.